do you think uh, it should be taught in schools do you think we should we should probably teach some ai tools to 8th 9th and 10th standard students in our school i think that uh, it would be very good if something like this happens because school is the base form where students where the generation goes on so if they will know that how to use ai from the very start the unethical use of ai would decrease to a certain extent and that would be very beneficial for the future i really sh- agree with shoya as using ai is good but you must first understand what are the pros and cons of it because anything if we are not aware of the misuse of it then you'll surely be in a big trouble mm-hmm. of course ai holds more Mm. Uh, both pros and cons, and therefore the students should be molded right from the childhood and inculcated the way how the AI should be used so that it's not misused. Welcome to School Talks. Today we have three amazing students, students of Saint Willie Broad High School, which is in Nala Supara. We have uh, Shorya, we have Maitri, and we have Jeel. and these students are going to spend the next maybe half an hour talking about life's ups and downs as a teenager and everything that comes with it thank you so much for joining us at the school talks uh, podcast and uh, i'd like to start off with you shorya would you like to share a little bit about who you are things that you like where you come from so hello everyone i am shorya and uh, i feel pleased and honored to share the screen with you sir and uh, uh, about me i am a like i'm a nature guy i love to spend time with nature and also that uh, i have a very curious uh, hobby about photography and i find myself to be very, very curious about knowing things and um, i belong from uttar pradesh varanasi uh, so that's all about me that's brilliant it's really nice to know that in you know even in 10th standard that you've been able to find some passion things like photography and it just uh, you know it, it it's just very motivating how about you uh i am a creative person so i really like drawing painting stuff and i belong from gujarat kutch and uh, my name is maitri would like to pass on to jeel i'm privileged to say here my name is jeel and even i'm from kutch gujarat I am inquisitive by nature just like him and even I like logical reasoning my favorite subject would include science super so now that you guys are in 10th standard what do you think is happening in your life like give us some information about what's going on inside the mind of a 10th standard student honestly the schedule is very tight you know we have to do a uh, ample of things completion of assignments projects and sort of but we as must believe that this is just a journey and we must enjoy this at the same time we have to work hard as it's our base for any other faculties just that i personally think that it's just a gate there uh, which is now going to open for me i'm going to have a new life after this uh, the gates of the world are going to open for me so in my mind currently of course as maitri said i will agree to that there's a hectic schedule of everything but i think that it's going to be a part of my life so i'm just uh, accepting it and moving on with the flow that's really nice i am accepting that this is just the start of everything and uh, now my life would witness a turning point i'm enjoying this process while studying too how was school life the 10 years or 12 years that you've been in school how was it what are the what are the various facets and diamonds honestly one couldn't define school life in few words school life is a journey a memorable journey which we, you will remember the entire life the different teachers friends teacher is like the second mother your second family you share in memory unmemorable uh, memories with each other which you could never forget the lessons you learn are priceless and therefore the school journey is the most important point in your life according to me. at the same time we feel like it's going to end it is a bit sad uh, but we have to accept it and we have to move on oh whenever i think about the school life it's nostalgic for me coming from my first grade to the 10th grade it was an adventurous path for me 
आई थिंक आई एम गोइंग टू बी दी वन ऑफ द बेस्ट स्टूडेंट्स बिकॉज आई सो आई ऑल्सो अ पार्ट वेयर वी स्टडीड फ्रॉम अर होम्स अ कम्प्लीटली न्यू एंड अ डाइवर्स कल्चर ऑफ स्टडिंग द एकेडमिक्स एंड आई थिंक दैट्स दैट इज़ वन ऑफ द मोस्ट मेमोरेबल पार्ट फॉर मी Yes, of course. Teachers, the principals, the friends, everyone. I'm going to remember. But then again, it's just a start start of my journey. Have you sort of decided what you guys want to do once you complete school? What colleges you want to get into? What fields of study you want to get into? Do you have some idea? Oh uh, yeah, personally, I think that uh, I'm going to opt for the science stream after I complete my tenth, because uh, I think that science gives you a rough idea of how. you have to study what are going to be your methods of studying and that would be the best part why i am choosing science uh, particularly uh, to be precise i don't have any kind of college in my mind but uh, i'm looking forward towards uh, university colleges and i personally love biology so i'll go and i'll select group 2 in science and i would love to do phd on a particular subject Uh, research is always a very exciting uh, domain and i'm happy to see that you want to do that anything from you even i love science uh, i'm as i told i'm inquisitive by nature so i would love to go with science i'm yet in the process of deciding my career but yet science is the field of so what are your friends doing like what are the kind of people you hang out with and do they know do most 10 standard students today in our area know what they want to do I like to be in a field where all kind of people are involved not just one kind of group but where all types of students are involved even my friends yet yeah, have no idea about my future but I have a kind of rough idea about what they are going to, and I'm going to motivate them or support them in this process uh we enjoy a time where we all discuss our problems right and also find, try to find solutions for each other's problems as in this phase and the teenage phase it becomes a bit difficult to decide what we are supposed to do in the future and sometimes we feel afraid of taking decisions as in what the outcome will come we don't know as we are not that experienced enough but yeah we are still into experiencing and you know exploring more and new things um i find myself to be quite social and that is the reason why i have a diverse friend circle in my um, like a very diverse friend circle everyone here has a different kind of opinion towards different perspectives and also i find that uh, everyone somewhere they know that what is their hobby or what is their passion to follow and that is the reason why i think that uh, everyone's career is very precise and uh, most of them most of them have got into that what they have to do in the future so are you saying that students now actually know what they want to do maybe they have a rough idea about it but they will have to work on it to decide that what precisely i have to do as in i would like to give an example i want to go in science field but science has a lot of opportunities various and like a cell i can do phd in on a cell on a tissue so what basically i want to do is yet not decided but like we have a rough idea that yeah we want to go in a science stream and yeah we have to think what what kind of support are you getting in this decision making from your parents my parents are totally supportive they they understand my attraction towards science and they support me in every decision i make and i am very grateful for that uh towards my side my parents are completely open to whatever i want to do whatever career or field i have to choose and i think that is the best part about what i feel about my parents that they are open to all my perspectives all my opinions and there's no like pressure or anything that you have to go for this or opt for something so that's the best part what i feel what do you think about what's happening in the world today I think- A- any idea what do you think is happening in the world today and what kind of a world are you going to be getting into i think you'll get into the workforce in about 5 to 7 years so what kind of work do you think you're going to be doing what kind of skills do you think you have to build i think the one who knows how to handle the social media platforms well have to you know merge with people how to collab and make knowledge more vast will have a good opportunity in the future and uh, most precisely using ai how to use artificial intelligence and in building up your career uh, may it be an entrepreneurship or teaching field or any field 
if you know how to use artificial intelligence well ethically then you'll be uh, in favor uh, in my opinion now in the then this teenage time peer peer pressure is leading many teens into wrong ways so in my opinion that we should in, imbibe qualities like having our own view a positive attitude towards life and having a reasoning behind every act we, we do so that we would not indulge into wrong things and have a bright future ahead um in my opinions completely agree towards what maitri and jeel said but on the very same side i would like to add that uh, this generation or not only this but i think every teenage generation that passes through this stage goes through a uh, goes through a particular hectic schedule that we have in our schools or maybe in our colleges but um, i think that the schools should not uh, lesser the pressure or the whatever every whatever they are facing in spite of that we should tell them how to solve a problem because when this generation when now we are going to be in the colleges or maybe in a future lives we will not always have people to solve our problems so i think uh, along with the academics there is also a particular sector of problem solving which is very important to teach to the students so that they don't so that they are independent in their future yeah this is this is pretty interesting so that leads me to ask you this question if you have to add two or three subjects in your school what do you think those subjects would be and why i think according to me learning different languages mm -hmm. uh, to become you know it will provide a base for future linguists and also second subject which i would love is learning our own indian culture mythologically like uh, i want you know address a particular scripture right but yeah learning that indian culture will be uh in my opinion i think that uh, logistics and entrepreneurship are the two subjects that should be added to the school curriculars uh, so as to raise more entrepreneurs from india and not uh, and along with that make people more logistic because in a country like india where culture is diverse we find more superstitions too so logistics will help to handle that and that is how we can like uh, contribute towards the school apart from this subjects i would like to add self development self defense subjects which would help individuals to uh, be safe in the roads too also a good persona development will help individuals to develop a good personality which would help be, to be in a circle where they could share a good views with each other and and, and what do you think is artificial intelligence or ai what do you think it is artificial intelligence is a particular helping base a tool that the humans have made for uh, e for making their work more simpler and i think that it is uh, as every coin has two sides a good and a bad one uh, in the very similar manner ai also has a good and a bad use so it's just a tool that we have to use for making our work simpler and not make uh, and not doing our work for this but what kind of what, what could you use it for maybe for information for gaining more information as in if i want to know what is the difference between uh, going to gym and doing workout at home and it won't do if i practice a uh, two years i work out at home and then uh, after that i don't get a result whichever i wanted and then i two years i go to gym this won't do but ai has made it more facile it has facilitated us to you know understand the difference between two things and choose wisely hmm. ai wide spectrum of knowledge which would help me to gain knowledge from all corners of the world also i would i would be able to gain information what's happening around the world which would help me to know and uh, be social with people and could express my opinion in a particular view it's uh, stunning yeah i just wanted to understand one more thing from you in this particular uh, example of ai do you think um, it should be taught in schools do you think we should we should probably teach some ai tools to 8th 9th and 10th standard students in our school i think that uh, it would be very good if something like this happens because school is the base form where students where the generation goes on so if they will know that how to use ai from the very start the unethical use of ai would decrease to a certain extent and that would be very beneficial for the future 
I really agree with Shoya as using AI is good, but you must first understand what are the pros and cons of it. Because anything, if we are not aware of the misuse of it, then you'll surely be in a big trouble. Mm -hmm. Of course, AI holds more uh, both pros and cons and therefore students should be molded right from the childhood and inculcated the way how the AI should be used so that it's not misused. That's that's wonderful. Now, I, let, let's twist this up a little bit. I'll probably throw one or two questions, maybe one question, and then you all can quickly, like kind of a rapid fire thing, share what comes to your mind, okay? Three problems that you experience as a teenager. A hectic schedule, especially. Um, and then I will also address the problems that are related to um, what school curricular activities bring up. But there are also, at the very same time, there are also benefits for the same. So, and the third problem would go like... Uh, how to develop our own persona because at this particular part of time a teenager gets very uh, cautious about how his uh, presentation is how uh, how his persona or his personality is developing so these are in my opinion the three things would be simply peer, peer pressure improper diet and a lack of time management what is peer pressure when you say peer pressure when I say peer pressure, I mean that the pressure uh, when many teens uh, influence other people to behave in a particular way that they think they are cool, which leads to many problems. Has that happened to you, Shore? Uh, it has not happened to me, but I have seen many of my friends going to the, the same thing. For example, there are many YouTubers, many influencers that we find around who make things which are not like uh, which are not good for people. And they influence it in such a way that people think that, oh, come on, that's such cool thing. But that's actually not. And that is what should be restricted from this world. I would like to add on it that people feel FOMA about, FOMO about it. That I'm, um, you know, uh, lacking that. And I, the Gen Z fever is increasing nowadays, which is, I think, not good. What, what is the Gen Z fever? you know, becoming more cool, wearing stuffs like rings and necklaces and following trends, posting stories, etc. I think that uh, in this current situation, the Gen Z thing that she mentioned is actually very important to know about because that Gen Z part has influenced a major population of the youth and I think that is leading a world to an extent where it should not go where people should devote their mind towards they're not and that is the reason why i think that i find less creative minds in this world less curious minds in this world and that is a problem that should be eliminated from this world so what do you girls find to be cool when you say cool what is cool wearing is there a temperature what is it fashionable stuff wearing fashionable stuff wearing branded stuff staying in a company where popular kids are what is popular? What is, what is a popular kid? What does that mean? Having a lot of followers on Instagram is termed as popular. So, are you actually saying that in 10th standard or 9th standard, there are students or friends of yours who are on Instagram and have a lot of followers? Undoubtedly, even from right from 8th. Yeah, yeah. It's Exactly what is happening due to peer pressure. One starts account. What are they posting? <laughs> Memes. Memes. A lot of use, which are yes. not at all useful. Using their time productively, but uh, in spending their time in these things. So it's the major today's problem. I find that um, I somewhere contradict to Jill's statement. I find that posting out memes is uh, is of course not as productive as reading a book would be but at the very same time i think making out memes is a very uh, like creative thinking that you one should have because i think making someone laugh is the hardest thing in the world that you could do that's an interesting point but are they making the memes themselves or are they just no. copying it from here and there or Sometimes. we never know we never know it can be yeah. that they are copying it from somewhere from some websites and posting it 
So do you do you guys have a lot of followers? We never have got so much uh, time to uh, invest in such uh, social media things. So we uh, even we don't crave for such followers. So how? What what I'm trying to understand is how do you know, or how do you how do you figure out that this is not for me, or it's okay not to be cool because you say this is cool, and then you've decided not to be cool. You 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 guys are. you know in many ways you dare to be different the first intimation ever given is by parents and then by teachers that this particular thing is not cool and this could be cool they always warn you in places where you should not be and where you should be so i personally figure out that what is good for me by consulting them often by looking after those gen z people we have seen that they Are and a big trouble when it comes to deciding what they are supposed to pursue in the future, as they are investing their vital time where they are supposed to, you know, find out what their hobbies are, you know, just play around, you enjoy your childhood. They are stuck into a very a psychological disorder that, you know, becoming. Sometimes they also feel very anxious about their likes, dislikes, and following. followers and uh, social media platforms they also you know sometimes compare themselves with uh, people around them having lot of followers and quite sometimes feel inferior which is not right you know everybody is different everybody has their own capabilities and we in that phase just have to enjoy our life you know play around make friends play some music you know develop hobbies that's all thing which we are supposed to do in this space and not you know attracting towards making the world influence i personally uh, very uh, like agree to whatever maitri said that it's actually a psychological disorder to be like something of course it could be their likes um, and it could be their hobby to make such things make such content but influencing other people in a bad way should never be your hobby i think so are you are you seeing uh, bullying online bullying or are you seeing that you're not able to make friends if you are not this way is there is there anything like that online bullying is so popular right now not just online but offline bullying this is because if someone has uh, that nerd looks then many people just uh, don't socialize with that person and which results into that person person falling into depression which is today's problems and that that's why many people uh, experience fomo fear of missing out and therefore they indulge in some wrong activities which she, uh, which they shouldn't do in my opinion i think that uh, this people that are influencing things and i find myself to be very lucky that i am not a part of this part of the society because i think that not that is not the only cool thing that according to this generation which i don't which i contradict with i think that uh, some being cool is being social with people when you are interacting with more people when you are learning with more people and i think that is something that is cool for me the definition for being cool and not about uh, being uh, that gen z type of thing coming to your question that uh, uh, what do you think uh, that bullying so i think bullying in today's time not everywhere not only about india i think it's around everywhere online bullying offline bullying both of these things are bad and they have emerged on a great extent in today's time like a uh, uh everything everyone thinks that okay if he has a good humor he can just uh, he can pass on comments on someone so he is really cool again the mentality of the society is going in a very wrong direction my what i think about it mm. i would really like to highlight this point that as we live in a very modern era where every kids are accessible to mobile phones technology social media parents must keep a check on the their kid that what the kid is consuming the type of content they consuming is it right is it accessible or is it just spoiling their kids so i think that parents must keep a check every time that uh, the kids are going in a productive direction or the kids are facing some issues with the social media you know 
I've had experiences where many parents don't know how to help their children because in eighth standard, ninth standard, I've heard children tell their parents, "Mummy, आपको क्या आता है? आपको तो कुछ नहीं आता है. आप तो सिर्फ पांचवी पढ़ी हो." How how does how does that make you feel when you hear a student speak like that to their parents? In today's society, speaking this to the parents, uh, questions are in ourselves that where is mankind going? Uh, the parents who have taught us so many things, we are questioning them, their teachings. Therefore, many people should start awareness programs for such parents so that they are better uh, knowing with the technology, and therefore they could keep a good check with the mobile phones. Also, students should be taught that uh, we, the proper use of mobile phones so that they are not wrongly using it. Also, parents should be informed that they have many features like child lock, etc., which they could use to protect the child from such. Things. I've seen, uh, you know, some kids getting so much anxious that their parents don't know how to speak English fluently and in front of everyone they stutter, as in initial stage everybody does. But I would love to mention this that English is not a, you know, a very important thing. It is like a necessity if we are a if you are a business professional. But English is just a language. Take it as a language. Don't take it as a aspect that judges your knowledge. So sometimes it happens that if the one if a person can speak English, he is considered as wow. He is so knowledgeable. He is so smart. He has a good persona. But that's not the case. English is just a language. So take it as a language. Shocking, I would say. It's really shocking. And as Jill told and Maitri told, that the mankind is going towards something where it shouldn't. And I think that uh, it's not their parents' fault. It's uh, not the teachers or the schools' fault that uh, they are not able to uh, help out the child. But it's actually there is a point from where on you uh, you know that what is good and what is wrong, and you can't decide what is good bad. So at that point, I think that the student uh, or that particular child should understand that how he should respect uh, his parents and how should he behave to them. and i think that it's a very very crucial matter to handle and i would rather compare it to a crime i would say because they are the ones that taught you how to walk talk how to how to do everything that you do in this world and how can you speak to it it's really shocking for me mm. i want to ask you a question in the past 6 months or maybe a year or maybe 2 years was there a moment in your life where you had to say no to somebody because of what you believed in don't give me names of the person but maybe you can if you feel like it you can share the situation and why did you say no and what was your reasoning for saying no because i'm guessing you said no because you thought it was wrong or it was not cool but this will give me a little insight on what's actually going on um it's also okay if you don't want to share on my case my friends you know said encouraged me to be on social media as i'm not on social media i don't have any account on instagram they said that come on instagram uh, we'll talk we'll do but as i am so concerned with my board exams i'm not on any social media platforms and i think it's not that good because i am unaware of what other trends going on the good trends not that the gen z ones so sometimes i feel like i want to be on instagram but then the my, the my mind says that no first you must prioritize your board exams after that you may do it and i think after that i'll do so that's the point where i have to say no to my friends it's nice to see that clarity and that conviction that you come uh, especially to something so difficult and so lucrative you know at this age uh i there was a time in my life uh, like it was just the past year my past grade wherein uh, i had a friend of mine uh, wherein he told me to bang the school so i thought of it for a sec but then i thought that uh, would it be good for me just questioning myself that would it be good for me what if what if just in case anything happens and who would be responsible for that who would be responsible if anything like any accidents occur with me so what would the people that i'm leaving behind would go through especially my parents who care for me the most so i think uh, and that time i said him a clear no i told and i also motivated him 
to not to do for the same because uh, i think that being a friend it's a responsibility to do the same so yeah that's how i also motivated him not to do the class bunk and also even i didn't win thank you for being honest it really takes a lot of courage especially when it comes from a friend somebody that you hang out with and trust and don't want to lose out on uh, you also i think put yourself in a position where you look like you're taking a moral high and i think that is the exact time to take a decision like that but i really admire and respect your courage in that Two years ago, a group of people approached me. Uh, I sensed that they weren't uh, good. Uh, they indulged into bad activities, but they asked me that could you be friends? We would indulge in such, but I uh, firmly refused because I don't like such uh, misgoings. I knew I knew that it would mislead me in my life. So that was the time when I firmly said no to such things, and even told them and advised them to leave such ways. Hmm. how would you uh, how would you consider your relationship with your parents especially as you start growing up you know a lot of the teenagers want privacy they want individuality they want to break free break through they want to build their own identity how is that going with your parents uh, there is a thought that i came across it said that um, the time when no one wakes you up the time when you come back home and there's no one waiting for you in the late nights the time when you have your dinner alone what do you call it freedom or loneliness so i think that is something that is very important to know and when you realize that what this thought says it is actually very traumatic sometimes that the time that we are having now with the parents how supportive they are towards me and my relation with my parents is quite casual like um, like whatever there is no strictness that we that i find around my parents they stop me for things and i'm very fine with that that um, they of course are telling it for the sake of my betterment and um, i listen to them for because i know that i know their importance so that's how my relationship with my parents is uh, i understand that generation ga- uh, gap is a prominent issue today uh, but i and un- even understand that it is necessary to cope with the same uh taking initiative from both the sides as well as parents as well as children is important to cope with it uh, and therefore my relationship with parents is quite often we don't uh, have any secrets or barriers between us uh, i personally share every uh, moment of my life with them and which helps uh, our relationship to be transparent and i enjoy it i would love to mention that uh, not just with my parents with my whole family i have a very casual relation uh we often talk about uh, uh the teenage things we talk about our future we talk about everything no secrecy between us and i think i'm well privileged to be in such a family and you know sometimes some kids are inferior and they don't share the problems teenage problems you know we uh, pass through many hormonal changes and sometimes we don't understand what is right what is wrong this time this is the phase when we are need with we need a support we need a moral support so this phase i really want to say that parents must guide this guide their child to take right decisions and what how to tackle these problems mm. so this kind of interest uh, it opens up a very interesting question uh you guys are always obviously very lucky that you have very good relationships with your with your parents and a very nurturing relationship with your families and there may be many students out there in this school or other schools in your buildings families and communities who don't have such nurturing relationships so i want to ask you a question Do you still have this concept of best friends? And do you guys have any best friends or do you have like like what's your relationship with friendship? What do you think about friendship? How long these friendships have been? And most importantly, what do you talk about? Talking about me, I have a friend of mine who is in the same school. He's my friend since first standard and yet he's continued to be So it makes it ten, ten years, a decade now. 
so i find that when friendship is from both the sides it is a really good friendship i don't know that after this when we switch our colleges maybe what how our friendship would move on i would really like to carry it on but um, i don't know about the future but talking about how this 10 years have been i find it very interesting to have a friend because um, we can share everything with our parents of course and they are our best friends of course but uh, there is a um, certain time like uh, in the class you are not with your parents you are with your friends you are in the uh, aura of your friends so at that time you find your self a bit happy and i think that um, my friend and i have made certain memories which i am going to remember for the whole life memories that i couldn't carry out with my parents so that is how it separates uh, it draws a line between parents and friends wherein uh, of course parents are very important but uh, friends are also important for your life Definitely, I have many friends, but I don't like prioritizing any friend and calling them best friend. For me, all friends are equally important to me. Ah, uh, I have many friends right from childhood. I really hope that I keep a connection with them in the future. But uh, yet, future is unpredictable. I ah uh, hope to make many new more friends. Ah, uh, and the next question that you ask that what do you share? sharing with friends is the uh, sharing every moment you spend in the class the tiny jokes you crack are uh, priceless they give you good memories that you will remember in the entire life and uh, therefore the friendship is important in this phase and according to me i would la i think i i have a bit contrary views that i have lots of friends but just a single best friend 12 uh, our friendship is 12 years old this year it's going to be 13th year and the things that we share is priceless the moments that we share is priceless you know we are the best friends the difference main difference between a friend and a best friend is that friends often go come and go but the best friends remain for our whole life maybe not in future but till now my best friend is just a single person and the difference a major difference is that she knows what i want what are my likes what are my dislikes how uh, what things you know i which uh, things attract me which thing don't attract me what are the things i often get you know attached with detached with whatever a single minute information about me she has but not every friend has and there's a mutual relationship between us which i think won't you know it's priceless and i would take it throughout my life and i also think that uh, not only having a friend it um, you should have friends i'm not talking about best friend best friend i think that you should limit your best friends to one or two yeah. because uh, i think that that will bring out trust issues to you yeah. so um I think that you should have friends from a diverse culture, from a diverse where you have friends from, a, like a, from every religion. You have friends, irrespective of what any discriminative criteria. You have friends from everything, so that you can know what the society is all about, and that will bring different perspectives, different opinions to you, and that will boost up your mind. So that is the reason why you should have a diverse culture of friends to your friend circle. Interesting question. Uh, all through school and college, I probably had one or two friends. That's it, just one. Like I was a one friend person. Um, so, uh, particularly comes to my mind in eleventh standard and twelfth standard, a friend of mine called Samir. So, Samir, if you're listening, this is for you, buddy. I've learned so much from him. You know, things like valuing money. That's something I really learned from this guy, Samir. valuing uh data so there was a rule in in college that 75% attendance hona chahiye so you should have a small little book and you should write present bunk present bunk and keep calculating and you'd ensure that he's always about 75% so when i if i tell him that are you going to college today or no he would look at the book and he would decide uh valuing time in college when he was there he would just like be so focused on ensuring that you know that he has to learn and he has to study and putting in that effort um uh, one day i remember samir and i we went to college and there was a slow cycling competition and both of us were like you know let's see what's going on 
and there was this one guy who got onto the bike and stood in one place for 10 minutes. He just stood there like a statue on two wheels for 10 minutes. And I was like, wow, fantastic. Chan, excellent. But not Samir. Samir went back home and I watched Samir for one year practice every day. He was stubborn. He practiced every day. Well, next year he won first place. Oh, that's yeah. great. He won first place next year. And then I was like, I watched Samir do it, but I didn't do anything. Connecting the dots. You know? And then the year after that, I did it, and then I won. Right? Congrats. So, Samir really showed me what is possible. He showed me what to do to make something possible. He used to sit down and design cars on the, you know, in the, on a paper. He used to design cars, he used to design bikes. He said, I'm a car designer. Banega. Today, he finished his automobile engineering. He went to IIT Delhi. He finished his design course. He designs cars in Australia today. Oh, great. Oh, yeah. Living example. So, wait. Nalasubara West, 4th Road, Sri Prasta. He used to live there. He was my friend. One of the things I learned from Samir is so small things, yeah? Um, on a notebook, there used to be a red line, which is the margin. Samir used to write inside the margin. You say, I don't want to waste the book. Yeah. You start right from the top all the way to the bottom. You not leave the margin on both sides. And he's like, I don't want to waste paper. It's difficult for my parents to buy books. Samir and I traveled to, to, to Kerala when we were in 12th standard to do a trip. I said, oh, Kerala di khata and uh, I remember that my parents had given me uh, 6,000 rupees for that seven day trip. So I was very excited to tell Samir, hey, cheza rupya diya, mommy, daddy, and everyone, go have fun. So I reached the station and I asked him, how much did your parents give? And he said, 2,000. And he said, how much did your parents give? And I said, 2,000. So he really, really, really taught me the value of money, taught me the value of resources. And that's why he's a friend. You know, we've probably not spoken for so many years, but he's a friend. He's a friend for what he stands for. He's a friend for what he had the courage to teach me. He's a friend because he was a teacher. Exactly what you said, Shorya. When your parents are not there, who teaches you what? Right? So that brings me to my question. What are you learning from your friend? Or what are you teaching or influencing your friends? Uh, I think that uh, my friend has a very um, has has a very different perspective to everything. Like whatever you expect or anticipate that he's going to say, he will be completely contradictory to that. So I find that my friend teaches me a very um, like he has a very entrepreneurship uh, type of brain. So he finds business in everything. And when we discuss that while walking, like from the classes to the school or the from classes to go back to a home we find that every single thing we just are discussing that how that guy is making money and how that business is working so it's a completely like his brain works just like a businessman although he's 10 he's in 10th but his brain is just out of this world and i uh i also have one more friend and i think that uh she teaches me a lot of things on various aspects on how the society works so that is how my learnings are there and i am a very geopolitic type of guy so i come on discussing that what's happening on the world what <coughs> sorry what are my perspectives that's all what i teach and what i am taught by them oh thank you so much for sharing that Shorya. i learn a very important life lesson from my friend that is how to maintain our relationships there was a phase in life when we were detached uh, around two years ago. Our classes were changed. We were completely detached. I started building up new friendships and was quite moving on. But she still remembered me. She used to come to me every day, every every single day. She, you, you know, she made me feel that I am important. And she, uh, she taught me a very important life lesson that whenever we are attached to a person, we must make it that our relation sustains and 
you know that mutual relation which i have with her is quite priceless thank you for sharing that and it also kind of makes me believe that we should not be shif- shuffling kids from classrooms right because there are so many social ties and relationships that have been built up but adding on to that just keep not shuffling would lead to just single friendship and we won't encounter new people sharing new ideas we would just stay in a one group which would lack the element of socializing which i think is important and therefore su- shuffling of classes is important in my perspective uh, back to the question uh i have many friends it's not just getting influenced or influencing someone we share our mistakes and learn from each other's mistakes uh, in the process we learn many new things uh, i have seen many different values from different friends like determination or not pr- procrastinating anything perseverance and therefore i get every different life lesson from each person i meet as a friend that's really nice to see your vocabulary there right you're able to name values you're able to name emotions and i think that is a metacognitive skill that allows you to be in control and gives you a logical explanation for being uh, the way you are is there somebody in your life that you have forgiven over the past one or two years is there somebody in your life that you have forgiven don't give me their names but if you have what what did you forgive i think i forgive it my very own self and um, that was for not being so social in my past lives i think that i was mostly um, an isolated person after especially my 5th grade because after the 5th um, our classes changed so i think in during the period of lockdown i was a bit isolated not uh, like that depression kind of thing or stress kind of thing but i was a bit isolated so after that i thought um, i came across certain uh, incidents certain acts where it i got to know the importance of socializing uh, people and um, that's it when i forgive my very own self you see me now how i am today ah that's such a brave thing to do and i think i think we're all very hard with ourselves and we are we just way too hard with ourselves so that's a that's a really nice realization that you had and i'm glad that you're experiencing that mm i'm in a phase of forgiving myself i haven't forgiven myself yet but i am in the phase of forgiving i am practicing actually uh the thing that i am forgiving for is i didn't give importance to my hobby two years i completely you know i have a hobby of drawing two years i denied drawing completely you know just kept it aside and did everything else than that but now i really regret that now i have to choose my career and then i don't have the time to do that thing and i'm really forgiving it and i'm uh, removing time from my schedule hectic routine and trying to do some some kinds of learning new techniques and what Mm, thank you thank you like personally that. follow the principle forget and forgive so i don't remember many uh, issues i have or any fights i have so it's not just remembering that i have forgiven someone or it's not just i have done some a good thing to them forgiving it is is just a human nature so i i have even forget what i have forgiven some oh that's That's really nice. <laughs> Because some people say forgive but don't forget and I think that's really not forgiving and it's so nice to hear you say that you forgive and you forget and hence you don't remember. That is just absolutely very philosophical actually and I'm I'm really glad that you think this way and I think more young people should think this way. On a closing note, I want to ask you one question. What is it that you want to really bless your friends with? What do you think other 10 standard children need to know or need to hear? Is there a message of hope that you want to give them? Is there a is there a heart to heart that you want to share with them? Something that may shift their perspective. Something that they may that motivates them to become According to me, 10th standard is just a base. learning things is quite more important than getting distinctions and you know getting that first rank 
आई डोंट थिंक सो इट्स इम्पॉर्टेंट फॉर एवरी थिंग एवरी वन लाइक यू नो टेंथ स्टैंडर्ड एवरी वन हैज टू डू आफ्टर दैट वील गो एन टू पर्टिकुलर फैकल्टीज दैट वी वॉन्ट I think that everyone must focus on what they are. They want to do in future. They must start practicing it right from right now. No need to, no need to, you know, have the same goal at attaining first class in tenth standard. According to me, I really want to give this message to parents that please don't pressurize your child for attaining first rank in class as well as in the district. And some parents also have that dreams that my child must gain that first rank in the state. so i really think that you know you must learn things enjoy the process and just believe in yourself go ahead don't worry about anything god is with us and we are with us we were, we are with our own selves and our parents are always with us That's such a beautiful message such a beautiful message in my opinion if i want to preach my friend that uh, it would be to get out of the dogmatic attitude and broaden one's outlook so that uh, the person is not narrow minded or stick with just one kind of people he should socialize around and talk with everyone not judge anybody on based on any criteria like race or religion he should be like open to everybody so that's my opinion. i would like to add one more point uh, that please keep this thing in mind i uh, i've got a quote winners never quit and quitters never win so keep that perseverance quality in yourself and just go on with whatever you love follow your heart always brilliant i love the fact that you said be open because i think being open is a is a huge uh, value and it shows a lot about your level of self leadership to be able to open to be you know to be able to listen to a different perspective to be able to appreciate a different point of view it just speaks a lot about your humility it speaks a lot about your self esteem it, you know it, it i think it uh, it's a very powerful thought and and also when you say that winners don't quit and quitters don't win i think that is so important you use the value of perseverance and i think grit and determination and perseverance uh, are the single most defining qualities when it comes to children and getting children to develop those values now i think is imperative it's imperative to have a better mankind you know um the only message that i would like to convey there are a lot of them but i think that uh, what um, what is the need for an r to the 10th grade students is that uh, they should not pressurize themselves for being someone that they are not they should be real to this world and they should not um they should not like wear a mask out to be social that everyone should know me and things like that i completely agree to both of their opinions that whatever they said was uh, completely right and also to that um many people um never realize that it's never too late the owner of kfc the second long largest food brand food chain he was he started his business at 60 it's never too late even when you are watching this podcast wherever you are you can come back once again there's never it's never too late and uh, i also would like to state that there are two type of great people that are what in here one who are blessed with a great minds from very starting and second ones who are who carve their minds to be great and i think that this the second category is a way too short so realize that carve your mind to be great and it's never too late such fascinating thoughts and i don't want to say anything because i don't want to reduce or remove the intensity of anything that you guys have said it has been an honor and a pleasure to have this conversation with you and i think i could have gone on for another 2 hours i think we need to do more podcasts and talk about more issues that children are facing today and i'm absolutely absolutely honored to be in your presence and thank you for giving me the opportunity to serve you same you i'm yeah privilege to be here to be in the school and you know talk to you like us converse with you and we truly please a uh, gratitude towards you for giving us this opportunity to speak a thoughts on and uh, it's always very interesting to talk to you thank you go out and change the world That's all folks for school talks